Now I want to explain about the laying of hands and how it can help help our ministry. In Mark chapter 16, verse 17 and 18, it does talk about laying of hands that Jesus wants all believers to lay hands. Jesus said, miracles or signs will follow those who believe. In Jesus, in my name, they will cast out demons. Jesus they will speak new tongues. And then in verse 18, and lay hand on the sick and they'll be healed. Now, so this verse said that Jesus said, miracles will follow whom? Yeah. Will follow whom? Miracles will follow those who believe. believe. So when we believe, we can have miracles. And what kind of miracles? They'll drive out demons in Jesus' name. They'll speak new tongues. And also it includes two parts that we don't do normally, only maybe in persecution. That Jesus said also they can take serpents with their hands and they can drink poison and not to be killed now this I don't think we do every day you know but the last part says they'll lay it on the sick and they'll be healed so when it says who can lay hand on the sick who in verse 17 miracles will follow those who believe so it's God's heart that all people can carry the power of God to bless people now, but one thing is, we should be careful in ministry. When people have evil spirit or emotional problem or sin problem, they should not lay on people until they can take care of the problems. Because evil spirit can be transmitted. So, as I said, you know, evil spirit came from the Holy Spirit also, came from the angels who fell. So when people lay hand you know, when they have evil spirit laying on other people, the evil spirit can pass to other people. Oh, okay. Or when they live in sin or or uh, emotional problems, like the person is always unhappy, always angry, then they should not lay hands on people. Aha. Uh -huh. But from these two verses, I see that God's heart is that He wants all Christians to be trained. That we can lay on people and bring healing and bring, you know, drive out demons and bring blessings and change of life. That way the church will grow much faster. Let me share my experience in 1998. 
Wata hatupatie mwele, uh, jinda livyo isi mwaka wa F1 tisamia tisaina na nane. That changed my life and my ministry altogether. Ili badulisa maisha yake na uduma hake. At that time I've been a pastor for 15 years. Aha, alikuwa mchugaji kwa miaka kumina tano. I have been diligent in evangelism. I find it hard to really bring changes to spirit, the spiritual, spiritual life of people. And then in a meeting of an evangelist in Hong Kong, an evangelist came to Hong Kong. And then he laid hand on many people. And I went up and he lay hand on me. The instant he lay hand, he touched me. I felt power like electricity, just zoomed down. And at the same time, I felt great love enter me. At that time, I just felt totally love. Totally, you know, relieve of all burdens, and it's like being hugged by God. Oh, I can't just go on by the and the market. I say, And I cried for a long time. I can live from the brief. I said, I never knew that I can experience God like that. And I said, I want to keep that relationship with God. So that's the first part. Thought I want to keep the relationship with God. And the second thought was, if the evangelist can do it, I want to be able to do it too. Then I can pray for people and bring changes to them. Now I thought I have to pray for a long, long time before I can do that. But a few days later, very short time, one of my members asked me to drive out demons from her by laying hand on her. And then when I lay hand on her, she felt power go through her body and she felt something left her body. Also, I pray for the, the few church members there and they also felt power. I was very surprised that the Holy Spirit, you know, His power is upon me so soon. Now, I want to say that after the day I experienced the Holy Spirit, every day I spent, spent a long time praying. And then I prayed for more and more people in the church. They had all kinds of experiences. Some people cried for an hour. They said that all the hurt feelings in the past came out. Some people experience repentance. And then later I pray for some of the people they experience healing. Then I saw that the miracles in the biblical times can come true now. And then I went to different countries and I pray for people and people can experience a great work of the Holy Spirit. Including transformation of spiritual life. Zeal for the Lord. Zeal. You know, enthusiasm. Willing to serve God. Willing to serve God. So I see that it really brought big changes. Let me quote you a couple of examples. One time I went to a, uh, a actually another minister has a member that has evil spirit. Ha, ku, kwa, 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 
si oro. I went to the hospital to pray for this person. At first the doctor said that she has to go into the mental hospital. Because doctors don't believe in, your, uh, in uh, evil spirits. And then after I prayed for her, she was very peaceful. At first she was like this. She was at first she was like this. At first she was like this. Translate. Oh, alikuwa huyo mtu alikuwa and she say the evil spirit there. Alikuwa anasema kuna miroho pale kuna mapepo pale. And then when I pray for her, she just couldn't stand at all. Wakati alikuwa muombea huyo mtu aka akapoteza mwelekeo kidogo. Totally out of control. But after I prayed for her for a while, she was all peaceful and quiet. And the doctor says she can go home. She has some friends that came to her to visit her. When I prayed for her, I also saw this friend and I said, I will pray for you for protection. And there was one young lady. When I prayed for her, and we were in the hall in the hospital. And she was filled with joy. And she was laughing. Ha, 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 ha. She was laughing. For a long time. For five minutes. And then I kept praying for her. She started to cry. And she cried for a long time. Maybe 20 minutes. And then later she was filled with joy again. And then later she was now this is one person later who became a missionary. Aha, huyo ni mbali ya wale watu ambao walikuja kuwa wa missionary kwa kanisa lao. As I remember actually there are four missionaries that come came out from the church and a few pastors that came out from the church. Aha, akikumbuka ni katika kanisa lake ako na missionary wanne na ma pastor ambao wamekuja kutokana na yeye kuelekea. I don't just help them to experience the Holy Spirit. Yeye akutaka tu wao waraishi nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu. I tell them how important it is for us to follow God and have a good relationship with God and serve God. And I told them also they can have the power of God to pray for other people. So I raise up people who can pray for other people to bring healing or drive out demons. Or to change in spiritual life. Or to bring someone to Jesus. That they believe in Jesus. So I see that laying your hands is very helpful to ministry. For instance, for evangelism. If you just tell a person Jesus is good, Jesus can bless you. Ah, to them Jesus is very far away. But then when I when I say to them, you know, you God can come to you and bless you. And then I ask them, is it okay that I lay hand on you? And they say it's okay. And then I lay it on them, and then my, you know, instead of saying a lot of things, I'll be just loving God. And then I also pay attention to the flow of the Holy Spirit. And then I asked them what they experienced during the prayer. And then if they say they experience peace or love or joy or 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 try, uh, the burdens go away. Then I tell them it's what God has promised in the Bible and now he's doing it to you. And then I said do you want to be 
blessed by God for your rest of your life. Na wewe kwako unahitaji kubarikiwa na Mungu katika maisha yako yote? If they say yes, wanaposema ndio, then I lead them to repentance and trust in Jesus. Aha, anawaongoza katika toba na kumwamini Yesu Kristo. I have led many people to Christ like that. Anaongoza watu wengi kwa Kristo katika hiyo njia. I have also trained people in different countries to do that to bring people to Christ. Amepia fundisha watu wengi kwa mataifa tofauti tofauti kufanya hivyo ili wawalete watu katika Kristo. And also I will tell this new come uh, new believers. Aha, pia ataambia washirika wageni ambao wameingia kanisani. In the future you can pray for people to help them experience the Holy Spirit. Hata wewe ingawaje umeogoka leo lakini baadaye unaweza ombea watu waishi nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu. And you can be used by God. Na unaweza tumika na Mungu. You can bless many people. Unaweza bariki watu wengi. Your life will go higher and higher. Maisha yako yataenda juu. Do you want to be used by God? Unataka kutumiwa na Mungu? And some of them will say yes. Na wengine watasema ndio. Now what I'm telling you is, kile nakwambia ni kwamba with the power of the Holy Spirit, na nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu. When I bring people to Jesus, wakati naleta watu katika Kristo, I already tell them one day they can bless other people. Mhm. Anawaambia kwamba wasiku moja wewe pia utabariki watu. They can lay hands on other people in the future. Wanaweza wekelea watu mikono baadaye. So what I mean is when I bring people to Christ I already prepare them for ministry. Anasema kwamba wakati anapowekelea watu mikono kuwaleta kwa Kristo anawaandaa katika huduma. And there are newcomers and they came and they experienced God and then they changed right away. Aha, kuna wale pia wanakuja wakati wanaishi huko za Roho Mtakatifu wanapobadilishwa wanatoroka wanaenda. And when I pray for Christians also I will tell them you can be used by God greatly. Ah, pia napoombea Kristo naambia kwamba unaweza tumiwa na Mungu pia wewe. Now, uh, earlier this year I prayed for uh, someone asked me where I can drive out demons from a girl. Ah, mwaka huu ni mtu alimuuliza kama anaweza fukuza ama kemea pepo kutoka kwa Mungu. And then I drove out demons from her. Ah, wakati alipokemea pepo kutoka ndani mwake. And I tell her she can be used by God to bless people. Na akamwambia kwamba unaweza tumika pia wewe kubariki watu. And I asked her if she's willing. Uka akamuuliza kwamba una if she's willing. Aha. Uko unatamani. And then she says she she was willing. Akasema kwamba anatamani. And big changes came to her life. Na mabadiliko makubwa yakakuja katika maisha yake. She has a shop that she sells clothing. Ako na duka la kuuza nguo. Starting from that time when people come to buy clothes in her shop. Ha kuanzia wakati ule wakati wa ule watu wakikuja kununua nguo katika duka la She would tell people about Jesus. Anaambia wataja kuhusu Yesu. Many times I came to visit her shop. And I saw that she was selling clothes and she was telling people about Jesus. She became an evangelist in her shop. So I'm saying people can be changed instantly. Now, but also there are some people they just want to pray for them. Ah, kuna watu wengine pia anaishi wanaweza waombea. They just care about their own experience their need. Wao wanajiombea wenyewe wanashughulika tu na mambo yao wenyewe wataki kuombea wengine. And when they are not willing, they, their life will not be lifted up. Ha, wakati mwingine wakipeli wakifurahi ama wakitamani maisha yao itainuliwa. So in my teaching, I always encourage people you can be used by God. Katika mafundisho yake huwa anahimiza watu kama unaweza tumiwa na Mungu. Anything you do for God, God is very happy. <coughs> And I could raise some people in Hong Kong and in different countries. Okay, now when you hear this, do you think you can put this in your ministry? Okay, now I want you to give you a few Bible verses you can write this down. We won't go through this. Uh, in detail now these bible verses will tell you the work of the holy spirit now some of these verses doesn't say holy spirit doesn't say holy spirit but we know that father son and holy spirit are one so when it says that jesus did it 
Jesus can do it, the Holy Spirit can do it too. Aha. Mustari unapo sema kwamba Yesu alifsema, Yesu aneza fanya ile kazi roa anafanya so? Ni hile moda. Ok, now John 14, 27. Yohana, kumina ine, Mustari wa 27. Say it again. Yohana kumina ine, Mustari wa 27. Here is that Jesus said, I'll give you peace. Yes, when I say my command, it's a kupatia utulivu. That's what many people experience, peace. Yes, I'm not going to. What we're going to want to, want to, want to part, want to issue utulivu wakati wana pombewa. Matthew 11, 28. Matthew 11, 28. That all who are weary and burdened and will find rest in Jesus. Matthew 11, 28. That all who are weary and burdened and will find rest in Jesus. So this is burdens go away. Matthew 11, 28. That all who are weary and burdened and will find rest in Jesus. Romans 5 5. The Holy Spirit will pour the love of God into our hearts. The Holy Spirit will pour the love of God into our hearts. So this is people experiencing love. And then Isaiah 61 1 2 3. And then Isaiah 61 1 2 3. Isaiah 61 1 2 3. Isaiah 61 1 2 3. Now here it talks about to heal the broken hearted. And freedom for the captives. That means if they are under any kind of bondage, Jesus will set them free. And comfort all who mourn. And the oil of gladness instead of mourning. So this we call inner healing. Inner healing. That people can experience peace and comfort and joy. And then Psalm 16, 8 to 9. There it says that my heart is glad and also my body will rest secure. Aha, and I say, oh, come back. My wangu na fry na ata mili wangu ume okolewa. So there can be joy and also the body will feel comfort. So utakuwa na fry na ata mili pia utaishi kutulia. And then Psalm 4, 8. Zaburi nne. That we can sleep better. We can sleep better. Aha, to naweza lala katika aman. And then Mark 16 verses 17 to 18. Mariko kumina sita, mustari wa kumina nane. 17 to 18. Oh, mustari wa kumina saba na kumina nane. Okay. So here it talks about everyone. You know, everyone who believes will have miracles and they can drive out demons and lay hands on the sick to be healed. And then Romans 15, 18-19. Now here Paul said that when he did evangelism, it's also, it's you know, it's not just by the word of God, by what he said, but also by what he done, by the signs, power of signs and miracles, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Paulo anasema kwamba wakati anapofanya kazi ya Mungu, yeye anatumika vikuu katika nguvu na ishara katika nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu. Afanye hizo ishara kwake tu bali zinafanyika kwake katika kwa sababu ya Roho Mtakatifu ambaye yako ndani mwake. So Paul brought people to Jesus not just by what he said. Paulo anawaleta watu kwa Kristo kupitia katika ile injili ambayo anahubiri. But also by what he did. Na pia kwa yale ambayo anayatenda. By power of signs and miracles and the power of the Holy Spirit. Katika nguvu za ishara na Matendo yake ambayo watu wanayaona na wanamfuata wanakuja kwa Kristo. So this Bible verse support that evangelism evangelism should have the power of the Holy Spirit and miracles. Ha nasema kwamba uinjilisti lazima ufuatwe na nguvu za miujiza itokane nayo kwa Roho Mtakatifu. And then 1 Corinthians chapter 2 2 to 5 Wakorinzo wa kwanza mlango wa pili mstari wa pili 
hadi watano wa Korinto wa kwanza mbili mstari wa pili hadi watano Now here Paul said that I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ Aha. and being crucified. Asero kwa masi kutaka kujua lolote kutoka kwenu bali Yesu Kristo ambaye alisulubishwa. Now then some people say well he only knows Jesus and him crucified. He doesn't know the Holy Spirit. Ah mtu akawa anamuuliza kwamba yeye anajua tu Yesu Kristo ambaye ali alisulubishwa hapo ajui Roho Mtakatifu. But in verse 4 it says that my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. So he said that here again, it's not just by words, but also by the power of the Holy Spirit. That uh -huh. evangelism. So when we pray for people, they experience peace or love or joy or burdens go away or healing or demons go away wakati tunapoombea watu watu wanaishi nguvu wanaishi upendo na furaha ya Yesu Kristo kutokana na Roho Mtakatifu we tell them it's what God promised in the Bible. Tunaambia kwamba hilo ndio Mungu aliyoahidi katika Biblia. God is so real to bless you. Mungu ako tayari kukubariki. Do you want God to continue bless you? Unataka Mungu aendelee kukubariki? And if he is willing, kama uko unahitaji, we can tell them the gospel and bring them to Jesus. Tunaweza waambia ujumbe ama neno ambalo tunaweza waleta katika Kristo. And then if he is a Christian, we can tell them one day you can pray for other people for a healing or a change of life. And you can serve God with power. And your life can go higher and higher. Now let me tell you, before that experience of the Holy Spirit for me and after totally two different persons. Aha, kabla ya kuishi nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu ndani mwake na hata wale watu wengine. Before that, I was just using the word of God and I find it hard to change people just with the word of God. Kabla ya kupokea Roho Mtakatifu alikuwa na ubiri tu, lakini alipata ngali ngumu ya kwamba amebadilisha maisha ya watu. And after that, when I pray for people, I see all kinds of changes to people's lives. Not only can I bless the people around me in Hong Kong, not only can I bless the people in Hong Kong. Oh, sasa katika hiyo hali ameweza kubariki watu kule Hong Kong. But I go to different places and people experience the Holy Spirit. Some people change. Right away. Watu wa barikiri tu Hong Kong bali anapoenda kila mahali anapoomba watu watu wanapokea mungu za mungu na wanabarikiwa. If they hunger for God, ha kama wakona ya mungu, we need to hunger for God before God will work powerfully in us. Tunasaidi kuwa njia ya mungu kabla mungu haja chukua sehemu katika maisha. I hope you hunger for God. Ana tumai ya kwamba unanja ya mungu. Do you hunger for God? Unanja ya mungu. Another thing, laying on hands on people sometimes make people feel embarrassed. Aha, sa a wakati mengine unapo wakelea watu mengine mikono wanajisi ya kwamba hawajisi vizuri. So we have to overcome that embarrassment. Atunastaili kushinda kule kuishikwa o kubaya. When I lay hands on people, most of the time I'll ask them what they've experienced. Now, if he's a non-Christian, I'll tell them what God has done in their life and bring them to Jesus. If he's a Christian, then I'll say, God can bless you like this. And one day you can bless other people. Ah, kama kuna swala naweza ambia kwamba Mungu anaweza kukubariki katika hii hali na wewe pia utabariki watu wengine. If I don't ask people what they experience, they will forget about what they experience. Aha, asipouliza watu kile ambacho wameishi, watashahau kile ambacho waliishi. So I always ask people and reap the harvest right there. Aha, anawauliza watu na anavuna mazao yake pale pale and bring changes to their life right away. But many people feel too embarrassed to ask. They're afraid if they ask and the person says no, then they feel very embarrassed. 
that because they ask people what you have experienced and the person says no, then they feel very embarrassed. Uh -huh. But for me, I will tell them, it doesn't matter, you keep praying, you're experiencing more and more. It doesn't matter, we don't have to feel embarrassed. But many people feel embarrassed because of that fear. Another embarrassment is the person we lay hand on, the person might feel uncomfortable. They may feel embarrassed. Hey, and I see too. And then we want to try to tell them how wonderful God is. How we have prayed for other people and they've experienced the work of God. To make them feel good about being prayed for. Now I have prayed for tens and thousands tens of thousands of people. I don't know how many because everywhere I go I pray for people. I have seen miracles many places. I have seen cancer healed. I've seen different sickness healed. I've seen people jump with joy. I've seen people cry for a long time. I've seen people who said they saw Jesus or, or heaven. And I've seen one person who went to heaven. Now, other people said they saw angels or... Yeah. So all kinds of things happen. I'm very convinced that with, you know, ministry with the power of the Holy Spirit is totally different. But we have to be very careful. We don't do it because of pride. So, sometimes people pray for people and they want something dramatic to happen. It doesn't matter. Because it's not about me. It's about God. Blessing the person. So if person doesn't experience anything, it's okay. If you look at it like this, you are more relaxed. Hey, okay. Now, so any question, you know, that you can ask me like how you can use it in the church and uh, or anything you might I will say first go back to your church and do more teaching on it. And I say, So people understand the Bible, what it talks about the Holy Spirit. And then when people understand it, and then they have hunger for the Holy Spirit. Okay, so so teaching is very important. When people experience the Holy Spirit, I also tell them, don't just experience God in our spirit. The experience has to go to our mind and our life. <laughs> that the mind will say, wow, it's so wonderful, I want to follow God. God is so real, I want to follow God. It has to go to the mind. It has to have a lot of biblical teaching. And also has to go into the life. How to handle sins. 
jinsi ya ku and how to obey God and love God. Jinsi ya kuzuia dhambi na kumtii Mungu. Okay? So now um, you know I can help you how to open your heart. The key to being filled with the Holy Spirit is put down our sins. Hate sin. Aha, asema kwamba naweza kukusaidia jinsi ya kufungua moyo wako na ukatae dhambi, ukatae ukatae kushiriki katika dhambi. A biblical basis that you are, you believe in the Bible. Eh, uwe mwaminifu katika Biblia. And a faith God, that God loves us, He wants to fill us with the Holy Spirit. The infilling of the Holy Spirit is just a close relationship with God. And then worship in spirit and in truth. Now, we have the spirit and the soul. The soul includes the mind, the will, and the feelings. Moyo. Moyo. The soul? The soul includes the mind, the will, and the feeling. Ah, moyo una ushiana na mawazo. Neisia. Neisia. So first the mind will say, I agree with everything God says. Kwaza mawazo ito sema kwa mba nakubaliana hana haya yote. That God is the best. Mungu niyo wadamani. And the will is, I really want to serve God and love God. Na kule hile isi na sema kwa mba kwe na taka kumu. And the feeling is when I think of God, I just like Him. I enjoy God. And then the Holy Spirit in Psalm 103 verse 1. Psalm 103 verse 1. Psalm 103 verse 1. 103. 103 verse 1. Psalms 100. And 3. 103 verse 1. Yes, you say in your language. Zaburi said, There is said, All that is in me, praise his holy name. Oh, All that is in me, that is our whole spirit and soul. Now look at me. Now that is very hard to describe. But I'll show you. It's like the whole person. <sighs> the whole person love God. Oh, the whole person love God. And immediately his power and his joy will flow through me. Because I've done it so many times. I can do it any time. Even in the middle of the night. Oh. It's the whole spirit has sent to God. Oh, oh, it's like it's like our spirit has sent to God. Oh, oh. Okay. Now, and also we have the Holy Spirit for evangelism and for building up spiritual life. That's the purpose. Tunae ro wa wengilisti na wakuinua maisha watu kiro. It's not just for enjoyment. Iyo sio ya ku ya fra ya ku fraia. And also, you know, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, we need to take care of the emotions and the negative thinking. Sisi tu kujaza na rumba kwa kila zima tu zingati e mawazo yetu yako na mna gani tu na jizi na mna gani. Oh, all the burdens put down. Oh, all the worries put down. Oh, mawazo yetu na baya umeweka inje. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, so we have a time of prayer now because just hearing it, it's like I teach you how to swim. Okay, go swimming. Can you go swimming if I just teach you? No. And I said, I'm going to go. 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 I'
kwa yale mafundisho kuvereo ni theory sasa tunaingia practical if i just teach you to be filled with the holy spirit then okay you do it now for some people it works for some people it works if they spend a long time praying or your heart is very open now before many people they speak they pray just with the words they preach it just with the words. What we know now, when I'm getting, when I'm, when I'm back at the end, we're getting. It just say, God bless me. God give me strength. God give me health. God help me. It's just Amen. talking, talking. I don't know what we're getting. What we're getting now, when I'm back to my home, okay. I'll come and say what when I'm back to my home. Mumbo ni bariki. Mumbo ni nwe. Eh, kazi yako ni kuajili tu maneno. Lakini ni moja au jafungulio. When the mind is too busy, the spirit is not open. Amen. Wakati mawazo yako yako busy haya usayanga na mapalo shika para masayota moyo wako haujafunguliwa hakuna kitu unafanya So when I pray actually I say very simple things Wakati anapoomba kweli anasema vitu rais rais Yes Ah anaomba tu mambo rais rais Anacheka Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>